Hi, my name is Araceli Soto. Welcome. This is Art with Children, and this is sponsored by Child Start, also in collaboration with Somos Napa, Napa Valley TV, KBBF Radio, and welcome. And I am here today to talk to you guys about some ideas, some things that you guys could do at home with your children, especially right now that you guys are on spring break. Uh, this is a great opportunity to do things with your children and also for your children to have fun with you. So I brought in some really neat materials to show you guys and also things that you could do at home or even not so much, uh, you know, what, what can we do? It's more like this is material. These are some of the materials that you guys could collect throughout uh, different days or throughout weeks, even in months, and then, you know, create something really nice and big for, you know, with you and your child. So I brought in materials, and I'm going to show you in a little bit, uh, different materials that you can collect with, you know, before you toss them into the recycling bin or before you toss them into the, cra in the trash can. These are some materials that you can use with your child at home. And of course, you know, you do need to buy certain little things. You do need to, you know, of course, get some essential, essential pieces like, you know, glue, of course, maybe paint if you want to go to that point, if you want to do some painting with your kids. You know, there's some local places where you can find some materials like these. Uh, of course, always important to have brushes available for your little ones if you want to go towards the painting. Um, also, I wanted to kind of show you guys when choosing scissors for your child, especially if they're the age under the age of five, uh, looking for pairs of scissors that are not so pointy, you know, a little bit more blunt, to have like a little curve to it uh, would be good. So I'm going to show you some materials that you can collect from things that you shop, that you get at the grocery store sometimes when you go and get materials. And um, you can always, you know, like I said, little by little start collecting them. So we have, you know, different cardboard is always good. We have, you know, the paper towel roll is always good. It's always fun. You could use it in so many ways. You can even have your child play with it uh, where they can put in things through it. You can also, utilize it to make kaleidoscopes or you know go out for um, searching for birds and make little uh, binoculars with your child. Also many things that you can collect are lids, different lids, oh my goodness there's so many lids that we you know use and especially of course when we buy our milk juices and water lids are always great. These are always great collage materials um, that you could of course use on cardboard, on paper. There's so many things that you can do with these. I even saved the old Crayola marker, you know, lids. Those are always great to use also. Ah, another favorite one. My mom loves to buy orange juice, the frozen kind, and the lids. The lids are also a wonderful thing that you can save and use with your child. And they can do collage on it. They could put a magnet on the back and you can have a nice piece of art on your refrigerator. Other materials that you can save also when you go to the grocery store, when you buy your berries, your strawberries, your cherry tomatoes, these baskets are also wonderful to utilize with your child. They could be used to store their materials or toys. They could even be used to make prints with paint, make some prints with this. It makes a really neat design. Other things that you can also collect. Uh, tuna cans. Tuna cans are also great. These are a wonderful way for children to do little um, collages inside. You can even put a magnet and also can be in the refrigerator. Sometimes kids would use these and pretend to be cooking and, um, and make their own pretend food and put it in here um, and feed it to their little baby dolls. Another way is also putting them together become shakers. You can put inside, you know, little rocks, beans, other maybe materials, some lids maybe. You can glue them together, even with tape, tape them together and becomes a really neat shaker for your little one. Other materials that are always good to have with you is of course, you know, brushes. Brushes are very important. You know, if you're gonna go for the painting part, you know, you wanna get some colors some paint, which we have a lot of local places where we can buy paint. You can go to either to a grocery store, sometimes they may have. Uh, sometimes, of course, some other uh, retail stores may have different types of paints. We do have some local businesses that have a little bit of art supplies where you can get some brushes and materials. 
One thing that you can do when buying paint is that you don't have to go for all the colors of the rainbow. One thing you can always do to save some money is you can always go for the basic colors, which would be the yellow, the red, and the blue. With these three colors, you can make a lot of colors. You know, because I don't know if you remember when you were in school where you used red and yellow to make orange, you know, or using the red and the blue together to make purple. And of course, you can always get white and black to accent, you know, those colors. So that's always a nice thing to have. Another thing that you could even try if you want to do some gluing with your children and you're not quite sure, you don't want to use the plain white glue, you want to make it fun or different, what you can do is just get regular bottles of glue and you can even add some color to it. You can even add food coloring to it to give it some color and your, your child can have some fun with some different color glues. Those are always neat to have. Other things that you could, of course, use is save any type of material that you may think that, you know, I think my child could do something with this. And a lot of times your children will be the ones that can guide you and tell you what would be useful. What can we use or what may be something that they can use to create something. We have a little girl at one of our programs that created her house. She called it My Casa. And so what she had was, uh, the teachers had this box of just cardboard pieces. We're, we were not even sure what these cardboard pieces were for, but it was just a box um, uh, filled with them. And the little girl just kind of lined them up together and created her house. Other things that you can use, and of course, by living in the valley, we have a lot of wineries. So a lot of wineries, you know, what we can find easily. Now, of course, if, if you know anyone that has a, you know, that works at a winery, this is always great. Corks are always great to have. Um, I know our lo one of our local uh, stores has a, a big bin that people can go in and recycle their cork. You can even go in and get some cork from those bins. And they're so, these are great. And like I said, if you know somebody in the wine industry and can give you a bag of these, these are wonderful to have for children. Um, for instance, we have a little girl, a little boy, sorry, who created a bridge just by utilizing different pieces of cork, lining them up, putting popsicle sticks on it. And the interesting thing is that it wasn't the teacher who said, oh, today, children, we're going to make bridges. Actually, it was the little boy who decided that he wanted to make a bridge. And actually, he was playing with the materials. And all of a sudden, a little light bulb, you know, probably turned on in his little head and said, it looks like a bridge. I made a bridge. So letting your, child, your children explore the materials, they'll find ways to put into to put them together and create things. Um, I have a child here who got some rocks. And it was interesting because, you know, thinking about the rocks, and if you think about the word rock band, so she made her own rock band, thinking about it, and she went out and searched all around the areas around her where she lived and found some rocks and created her own rock band. So just letting them explore, letting them, giving them materials is always important for children. Another one that she, had, same little girl that made, uh, created a little fireplace for her dolls, which was interesting. She found little rocks, made her own little flames, and actually uses, uses this piece a lot when she's playing with her dolls. Always, you know, mom's jewelry boxes, these are always great. You know, when you're out shopping for buying new jewelry, save your boxes. There are so many ways you can use jewelry boxes for. This little girl uh, put the jewelry boxes together and made a little car for her dolls, which is wonderful. And of course, if you go to secondhand stores, you go to flea markets, sometimes you'll find a lot of buttons, materials, zippers, old uh, pieces of tin that their children can use to, to build something. And so we had, a little girl had found at a flea market a bag of buttons. I think her parent, her mom spent maybe a dollar on the bag of buttons and she utilized the, the buttons to create the wheels of her car. And you can see it's like a two passenger car. And of course, even has a little steering wheel in the front and she even used two buttons to make the, you know, the headlights and popsicle sticks, those are always great too. 
And um, another thing that you guys could also start collecting, like I said, t in order to have material to put some of this to work on, you know, if you're doing gluing or you're doing, um, you know, building, one of the things, uh, of course, cardboard is very important and it's free. One of the things you can get cardboard from is just typical regular boxes. Going to your grocery stores, maybe asking for boxes, maybe you know someone who just moved and has tons of boxes and you want to maybe take a couple of them. This is a great way to get cardboard. Another thing that you guys can collect uh, cardboard is cereal boxes. Cereal boxes have uh, wonderful material. It has, and of course you have the cereal box, you can cut out um, pieces from it. Or you can even utilize the box and have the child play with it to store their toys or to store their dolls or Barbie clothing. You know, they can store their stuff here or they can just cut it out and you can help them out if your child is unable to cut um, cardboard because cardboard can be a little thick and, and hard. So sometimes with certain scissors, you know, it, it's, it may need a little bit of help from you. So the cardboard is great, great material. It's free. Well, you do have to pay for it, of course, and then you have to eat it. But it's, you know, it's a great way to recycle, which is important that we try to show our children many ways to recycle. Uh, this little girl did a painting and utilized the egg cartons and used them as flowers. She said that they were little flowers. And so, as you can see, she painted inside the egg cartons. She even cut what it would be like the petals. So it's another way. Egg cartons are also a wonderful way to See this one, little girl? She did, and this one more, looks more like flowers. <laughs> so as you can see, egg cartons are also a wonderful way, um, a, a wonderful material to use in the home. If you want to go back into the painting, I know some parents get a little bit nervous with painting. Um, one of the things that they could actually um, do with them, and of course, it's important to let your children know what you're going to be doing, what uh, materials you're going to be bringing out and also, you know, preparing them. So if you're worried about when using paint, you're worried about them getting dirty, about them getting, um, you know, getting stuff around the house dirty, you can always prepare them about, okay, let's, we're going to use the paints on the table, we're going to keep it in the kitchen, we're going to cover the table with plastic, we're going to keep it all in one area. And so you, you know your child, you know your child the best and you know if you want to go towards maybe leaving them alone for a little bit and letting them explore, or you feel like you want to be close to them and kind of overlook or see what they're doing, you know, it's, it's up to you. You know your child better than anyone. So one of the things that you want to do is, um, if you want to do with painting is, you know, if you want to protect their clothing, you know, I always recommend parents, you know, try to either bring, you know, clothing or put them, or put clothing on them that you don't mind for, you know, to get dirty, get stained, you know, that you don't mind, you don't mind about that. Don't put them on their, you know, brand new dress. You know, I always recommend put clothing on that may get dirty, which is always um, important. And if you don't have anything that they could wear that where they can get dirty, uh, a lot of times looking at secondhand stores for shirts, you know, like the button kind, that's always a good one. Finding a shirt that could fit them, that could become their art smock, their special smock. And if you find a white one, maybe they can even decorate it um, and do some, some painting on it, letting it dry. And that becomes their special art smock that they can pull out when you're doing painting. Even with gluing, you know, when you feel like you want them to protect them from their, you know, getting their clothing dirty or messy. So one of the things with uh, painting uh, is, of course, you know, you want to have an area where you can rinse out things, of course. Um, one of the things that you want to do is have the child help out set out things. You know, depending on the age of the child and how comfortable you feel, you can always have the child help you set up the material, set up the experience. And, of course, how fun is this just to pour it out? Paint is so much fun. It's a very sensory uh, experience. And if you want to do some painting, you don't have to do painting with just brushes. You know, just doing with your fingers or with your hands is a whole different way of exploring the material. So if you don't want to, you know, you don't have time or you just have paint but you forgot to buy the brushes, you know, don't worry. There's so many things that you can use for them to paint, you know, as simple as a finger. You know, just painting with the finger is a great way for them to explore the, the paint. Another tool that you can use for painting, even just regular items in the home or dad may have or someone in the family may have some blocks of wood. You know, doing some printmaking, you know, having where you 
have a little bit of paint and you can make some printing with just different materials. That's always a fun one. Even these guys, these are fun. You can find these like in the dollar section at different stores. These make really neat prints. This is like one of my favorites with the kids. It almost looks like, and I'll show you to you guys. It almost looks like little fireworks. And you can do this in different colors and just have them explore and play with it. And of course, these you can rinse them off really easily. Even with toilet paper rolls, you can even make print with toilet paper rolls. It makes wonderful little circles. And like I said, if you have different colors available for them, even better. So let them explore, let them try out things. They'll, they'll be the ones guiding you and telling you what they need, what would they like to play with, what would they like to try out, and let them explore, let them have fun. And you know, don't be afraid of trying out things or don't be afraid of you know, testing out different materials. You know, I had a mom who showed me this idea of just a regular uh, milk carton and she was looking at it after her kids had eaten breakfast and she was kind of staring at it and thinking about it and then she realized, actually, I see something here. I see if I cut this area here and I cut this part here, I actually was able to, she was able to pull out a shovel from just this container. And the next time what mom did was she just cut it in half and that became the bucket. So now she had a bucket and a shovel made out of just a regular you know, milk carton. So this was just a mom playing around and just was looking at some materials that she had in her own home. Uh, of course, juice containers, milk containers, these are always great for bird feeders, for making houses. You can even make ships out of this. You know, let the child play with it, or you yourself play with it. You know, think back when you were a kid and all the, you know, all the, you know, back then we didn't have a lot of toys. If you think about it, we always had certain little things, and we had to be very creative. Nowadays, you know, there's a lot more options for kids, so it's important to, to kind of bring in and have your children experience those times, just like what you were, had to be creative and keeping yourself entertained. You know, let your children go through that process and, and let them think, okay, how can I do this? What can I do? And, and of course, you know, there's so many things that you have available in the home where your child should not be saying, I'm bored. You know, there's so many things that they can do. And of course, another thing that you guys could utilize in the home, these are great. These empty plastic soda containers, these are always wonderful. These you can fill with water and have beads fall in. Your child can help you decide what goes inside. You can even add a little bit of food coloring to it. And this becomes a really neat water, you know, where they have the little things bouncing up and down, kind of like a lava lamp kind of thing. So you can even add, add a little bit of oil to it and just have with it, have fun with it, experience it, you know, test things out. See what happens if you put in a piece of cork or what's going to happen if you put a stick or a rock and have you talk to your children you know talk about it see you know what comes out of it and there's so many things that they could um, show you our kids are very very creative and it's it's something that we need to give them an opportunity to do so these are some of the items oh and one more thing before I forget um, another thing you can do with pasta Pasta is a great material to use uh, for collage, um, for using to uh, make beads. So one of the things that you can do in, you know, pasta you can find bags for like a dollar. You know, you can go to grocery stores, yet sometimes you can find for 60 cents a bag of, of pasta. And a great way to color pasta is using alcohol, like regular, regular rubbing alcohol and a little bit of food coloring, mixing both and putting the pasta in and just soaking it. You may feel like, okay, it needs more color, add some more food coloring to it. And so what happens is when you add the alcohol with the, um, with the, um, with the food coloring, what happens is that you're able to put in the pasta to soak in that liquid, and the alcohol doesn't let the pasta uh, get all soggy, get all you know, soggy. You know, usually when we cook, pasta becomes very soft and soggy. So what happens with the alcohol, it just dries it up fast and doesn't let the pasta go hard. So what happens is now you have like these really neat hard little pieces, just a regular pasta, but now they're, they have color to it and you can make beads out of this. You can have, you can even buy the big pasta, the big ones for like younger children who need some little bit of support with the fine water skills. You can get the bigger pasta and have them strand, 
you know, their big pasta beads and make necklaces, it's a great way to, um, to make some. You know, you don't have to go and buy the fancy little plastic pony beads. You can actually make them yourself. And you can help your, and actually your child can help you make them as long as you're, you're being cautious and you're using maybe some, something to protect your clothing. Of course, that's the art smog, that's a good time to bring it in. And using maybe a metal spoon to mix in the pasta with the alcohol and the food coloring and let your child help you with the process. It's a nice way you put it out in the sun to dry and voila, you have beads made from pasta. So there's many other materials and many other things that you can at home can collect little by little. I'm, I'm always telling families, look around your home. When you buy things, look at the packages, see what maybe you can use it. Even show it to your children. They may be the ones telling you, oh, this is great for this. So don't toss everything, you know, try to see what you have and save them and play with them. Let your children play with them. You play with them too, have fun and give yourself a time and your child to, to spend some time together and do some art. So hopefully you get some good ideas. Hopefully your little light bulbs maybe might have turned on when you see this and hopefully you get a chance to spend some time with your child, which is so important. And that's one of the things that our program with Child Start that we try to encourage parents to we promote Time with your child is the most important thing. So have a wonderful day and spend some time with your child and do some art and have fun. Thank you.